I want this nation to be sympathetic to the believers and to the Jews. Because if the government starts persecuting the Jews and the believers, this nation will become a good nation. It will not come in as Philippines in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Hello, this is not being preached in the churches. Why? The pastors must study it, research on it, plan it, think about it. A lot of believing Baptists don't even know what this is. And many Baptists are not even interested, just like some of you. Tonight I'm going to preach to you. I'm not going to use any outline anymore. I'm just going to read here what I've studied and learned from some books tonight. The title of the message is The Antichrist and the Times of the Gentiles. In Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 4, it says that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. In Daniel chapter 8 and verse number 9, And out of one of them came forth a little horn with wax exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. Verse number 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 to 8. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who opposed it and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God seated in a temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withhold it, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity that already work. Only he who now let it will let until it be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord that con shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Heavenly Father, as we make this study tonight, using, Lord, what has already been revealed and what has already been studied and researched, that you will still give wisdom to your servant tonight, that everything that will be said and done in this pulpit will be your word and your truth. As we, dear God, look forward to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
For this we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake alone. Amen and amen. You may be seated. There are three things that I would like to reveal tonight to you. I hope that you will not just listen. I hope you'll write them down. None of you have photographic minds. Study it. Learn it. Review it. Because it concerns us. It concerns the world. It concerns wickedness in the world. First of all, I would like to teach you and preach to you the words according to Clarence Larkin who wrote the dispensational truth And uh, I'm looking at when he wrote this. Copyrighted 1918. And still being used today in our Bible college. The title of which is the Antichrist. He said, In both the Old and New Testament, we are told of a mysterious and terrible personage that shall be revealed in the last times. He is described under different names and aliases, and it is only by a careful examination and comparison of these names and the person they describe that we see that they refer to one and the same individual. Let us compare what is written about him in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Let's start with Isaiah, and then let's compare it with the Apostle Paul. In Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 4, this man is called the king of Babylon. Last Sunday night, I preached to you on Babylon the Great. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, he is called the man of sin. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse number 12, the name Lucifer was mentioned. And I think all of you know who Lucifer was, isn't it? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the title Son of Perdition was mentioned. In Isaiah in, in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 8, and chapter 8, verse 9, he is called the little horn. In 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse number 8, he is called that wicked. In Daniel, chapter 8, and verse 23, he is called a king of fierce countenance. In 1 John 2.18, he is now called the Antichrist. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 26, he is called the prince that shall come. In Revelation 13, verse 1, he is called the beast. 
The verse is on the board. Look at it. Are you listening to me? Okay. In Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 36. Daniel 11, 36, he is called the willful king. The Lord Jesus, according to Clarence Tarkin, in his research on the Antichrist, also made a prophetic reference to him. In John chapter 5, verse number 43, it says, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. So the Lord Jesus Christ is even giving us a prophecy here that Jesus Christ will come and he will not be received. But when the Antichrist comes, he will be received by the world. The Jews rejected Jesus as their Messiah. Now look now. Hear me now. When the Antichrist comes, they will accept him. Now, let's look at the personality of the Antichrist according to how Clarence Larkin described him in his research of the Word of God. He says, The apostolic church believed that the Antichrist was to be a person, just like the devil is a person. He is not only a personality, he is a person. And you've got to realize the difference between a personality and a person. And he is called the embodiment of human blasphemy and wickedness. But Clarence Arkin Larkin made a disclosure during his time. And that was in the 1920s. Now it's 2023. About 100 years before, isn't it? He said, towards the close of the 12th century, many began to look upon the Pope as the Antichrist. And he said, this view has been largely advocated by Protestant commentators. But now, almost every Protestant commentator does not believe that the Pope is the Antichrist. We also do not believe that the Pope is the Antichrist. The Pope is the shadow of the Antichrist. The Pope is preparing for the Antichrist to come. But he is not the Antichrist. If we may, you may call the Pope one of the Antichrist, but not the Antichrist. So that when I preached to you last week and explained to you Babylon the Great, I spoke to you as an ecclesiastical system, a religious system permeating the world today. We call the ecumenical movement. 
the ecumenical movement is the coming together of many so-called religious denominations, Christian denominations as one. That is in preparation for the Antichrist. But then we find the Apostle John in 1 John chapter 2, verse number 22 says, Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. The Roman Catholic Church perhaps will not deny the Father and the Son. But they added, they added the Virgin Mary to be the Queen of Heaven. It is the same thing. Judaism, for example, the Jewish people of today, as I've told you in the past when I was preaching about Israel, the nation of Israel is still the chosen nation of God, but not the people in Israel. Why? Because the majority of the Jews in Israel today do not believe that Jesus is the Christ. And when, when the word Christ is used, we refer to the Lord Jesus Christ to be what? The sent one. The anointed one. Or the Messiah. Of which the Jewish people has always denied. Again here it says, the Antichrist as the man of sin, according to Daniel 11, verses 36 to 37, exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. That's the Antichrist. Will you put the verse there, please? And according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 4, Sabidon, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. There is a chart. I don't know if, uh, if we can put it there. Can we put the chart on? That's the chart. Want to take a picture of it? Go ahead. I would allow you to. Makikita nyo rito, nagsimula doon sa Babel in Genesis 11. When they built the Tower of Babel, which is actually the Tower of Confusion. And that was the origin of nation. You're going to find out that when God destroyed the earth with water, all the people died and only one family lived. Am I right? That's Noah and his family. So that afterwards, when the flood finally subsided, there's only one family on earth. And that's the family of Noah. 
Now listen here. Noah had three sons. We have Shem, we have Chapet, and we have Ham. The Arabs and the Jews came from Shem. We call them the Shemitic nation. Today we find that the Palestinians, who were not Arabs, now listen now, the Palestinians were Muslims, but they're not Arabs. You get that? They are anti-Semitic. Because now, the word Semitic is now confined to the Jews at this time. Okay. Then we have the Hamitic nations coming from Ham. That's Canaan. The Palestinians came from Ham. Put. That's Libya. Came from Ham. Kush, that's Ethiopia, it came from Ham. Mizrim, that is Egypt. Babylon, all of them came from Ham. So mula doon sa Iraq, Iran, Libya, Syria, all right, Canaan, Palestine, all of them came from Ham. It's not only the black people of Africa. And then we have the Japhetic nations coming out of Japhet. They are the Tubal, Meshek, we have Madai, we have Tiras or Thrace. We have Magog or Russia. We have Javan or Greece. We have Gomer or Great Britain. They are the Japhetic nations. The image that you see is the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. Alala nyo? Huh? That many theologians call the Colossus. And it was interpreted by Daniel. The image the head of the image is made of gold. The breast is made of silver. The loins is made of brass. And then we have the two legs. It's made of clay and iron. According to the image here, that was designed and explained by Clarence Larkin. The other leg is the Western Division or the Papal Church, and the other leg is the Eastern Division or the Greek Church. The Papal Church, now, these are all speculations, all right? But there are some truth to it. The Papal Church is Roman Catholic Church. And the headquarters of that is in Vatican. The Eastern Church or the Greek Church is the Greek Orthodox Church. And the headquarters is in Istanbul, Turkey. Now, if you look at the history of the major religions in Europe, the Roman Catholic Church controls the West. Before the Reformation, 
They controlled Great Britain. They controlled France. They controlled Spain, Portugal. The rest of the Western nations. The Greek Orthodox Church controlled the Eastern nations. What are those? Turkey, Russia, Ukraine, Czechoslovakia. Makikita mo ang kaibahan ng mga design ng churches ng Roman Catholic Church at ng Greek Orthodox Church. You see? Nag-divide sila when Constantine the Great was the emperor of the Roman Empire. Later on, nagkasundo sila at naging ecumenical movement. You go to the feet of the image, makikita nyo iron and clay. All right? Makikita nyo rito sa image na ito, ha? nandito yung empires. Oo. Okay? Ano yung gold? That's the Babylonian Empire. That is absolute monarchy. Then we have the Middle Persian Empire, which is silver. Different from the Babylonian Empire. Okay? Then we have the Grecian Empire, which is brass. Then we have the Roman Empire going down. The Grecian Empire was the one that thought of democratic law. The Roman Empire applied democracy in their empire. And on. There's the Roman Senate. And the Roman Senate was elected by the people. But still, the emperor of Rome is the literal head of the empire. San natin ginaya and democratic institutions that we have today from the Roman Empire. Okay. Makikita nyo dito sa tabi ng image are different animals. We have the lion, we have the bear, we have the leopard, we have the he-goat, we have the ram. Many of which depict who the Antichrist is. The Antichrist is called the King of the North. So you're going to find out that the image tell us of the times of the Gentiles. Tindihan niyo ako? Hindi niyo naiintindihan. Ha? Tindihan niyo ba ako? Mula doon sa head, mula roon sa iron and clay, yun ang times of the Gentiles that started way 606 B.C. until today. Pag sinabing times of the Gentiles, ang ibig sabihin yan, the rule of the Gentiles. Okay? It means that even today, Israel cannot become a sovereign nation as in existence today. Israel is still needs powerful nations to help them defeat the enemy, like the U.S., 
like France, like UK. They cannot stand on their own. Ano mangyayari nito? Pagkatapos ng times of the Gentiles, kailan matatapos yan? When Jesus Christ comes back. Matatapos yan. Huwag kang pipikit. You're not interested in Bible history? Go out and leave. Nire-research ko to. Ano ka? Kabanas ng iba sa inyo. Ha? Matatapos ang times of the Gentiles when Jesus Christ comes back. Pagkatapos niyan, yun ang tinatawag na Daniel, ni Daniel na 70th week. Ano yun? Tribulation period. All right. Pagkatapos ng tribulation period, yun ang judgment of nations. Nandun ang battle of Armageddon. Nandun na ngayon ang tinatawag natin na revelation. Sinabi ko sa inyo, there are two divisions of the second coming of Christ. Am I right? First is the rapture. Ang ibig sabihin ng rapture, Jesus will come for His saints. After about seven years or more, will be the revelation in which Jesus will come with His saints. will touch down on the Mount of Olives and will fight that 200 million army of the beast. Or Satan. That will be a bloody fight in which it will take seven months, seven months to be able to bury all the dead. In which the blood on the ground will reach, will reach even the neck of the horses. That is how bloody the war will be. After that, judgment of nations yan. When the judgment of nations will come, yun yung inaawit natin, there's a great day coming, a great day coming, there's a great day coming by and by. Oo. Kung saan hihiwalay ng Panginoon ang goat nations. And the goat nations are those that have persecuted the Jews and the believers. Tindihan niya. And the sheep nations who were sympathetic with the Jews and the believers like us. Do you know why I am in Congress today? Do you know why I authored the National Baptist Day? Because I do not want this nation to be a goat nation. I want this nation to be sympathetic to the believers and to the Jews. Because if the government starts persecuting the Jews and the believers, this nation will become a goat nation. It will not come in as Philippines in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Nakuha nyo! Hello! This is not being preached in the churches. Why? The pastors must study it. Research on it. Plan it. 
Think about it. Hey, do you realize that? Huh? A lot of believe, believe, believing Baptists don't even know what this is. And many Baptists are not even interested, just like some of you. You're more interested in the preaching like, you know, uh, comfort of the afflicted, and, you know. How can I get out of a stressed, stressful life? All of those things. Yan mga preaching, yan mga evangelicals eh. You know what I'm saying? Kaya nakikita nyo, marami nakikinig sa kanila. Marami nanonood. See that? Emotionally unstable people. Now, if you are emotionally unstable, you're not going to like this message. Do you realize that? If you have a problem psychologically, you will not like this message. Because what you want to hear is what you want to hear. Not what you need to hear. Now, after the judgment of nation, magkita mo yung chart uli. Pakita mo yung yung chart. Magkikita mo yung bilog dyan nakalagay the millennial kingdom of Christ. That's 1,000 years. Kaya millennial. That the Lord Jesus Christ will rule for 1,000 years and this is now the time of the rulership of the Jews. Ito na. Oo. Ang mga tunay na mga Hudyo na nasambalataya sa Panginoong Yesu Kristo bilang Mesaya ang siyang maghahari sa buong mundo. Do you realize that? Okay. You came from Kuwait. You came from the UAE. You came from Syria. You came from Libya. You came from the Middle East. All of those will be ruled by the Jews. All of them. I showed to you several weeks ago on the land that God promised the Jewish nation through Abraham. Biblical historians call it the Fertile Crescent. What is Fertile Crescent? Kikita nyo ha? Iniwasan ang desert area. Look at that. Saudi Arabia is desert area. Kuwait is desert. Iniwasan yan. The reason why it's called the Fertile Crescent because that is the most fertile land in the whole world. Yan ang pinakamayaman sa minerals, sa natural deposits, sa natural resources sa buong mundo. Sinong may-ari niyan? Jews. You would notice, it includes the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is one of the richest seas in the world with all of the minerals in it including uranium. You think that Iraq is all desert? No. Iraq has more fertile lands than desert. The only desert you see in Iraq is the land near Kuwait but when you go north and you pass by the Tigris River and you go all the way to Baghdad, you're going to find the most beautiful land on earth. And take note, that is where the Garden of Eden was before. He 
Sabi ni Pacquiao, Akala niyo ba ang Garden of Eden nasa Dabaw? Tuwan-tuwa naman sa mga taga-dabaw na to. Pero, north of Iraq, so the Garden of Eden, north of Iraq, that is where Abraham was born. You realize that? North of Iraq, that is where the Tower of Babel was built. You take note here. Assyria is the first civilization on earth. Assyria was the first empire. And where is Assyria found? Right there in Iraq. Later on, the second civilization was Egypt. If you are uh, familiar with the history of antiquity, how many of you took that in college? Ang kasaysayan ng mga antik. I took that up. In the history of antiquity, you're going to find the first civil civilizations being studied. So makikita nyo, the first empire was Assyria. Assyria is Iraq. In modern times, okay? Lumipat sa Egypt. Magkabila. Egypt was a rich country because of the Nile River. But what is Egypt now? Nothing. They fought the Jews for so many years, and today Egypt is nothing. What is Iraq today? Nothing. They fought the Jews for so many years, and it is now nothing. Every empire that fought the Jews today is nothing. Do you realize that? The Jews were defeated so many times. But hey, listen. The Jews is still standing up today. That is how the blessed, that is how blessed the nation of Israel is. It follows that if you continue on standing up with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be blessed like the Jews. It follows. The MBBE is being blessed of God because for 48 years it is standing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if some of you are not. Parang Israel. Diba? According to the book of Romans chapter 11, Ang Israel naman is not all Israel eh. May remnant yan eh. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? May remnant yan. Hindi lahat ng nasa Israel, Israel. Ang daing Pilipino ron eh. Israel ba yun? Di ba? Ang daming iba't ibang lahi dun eh. Israel ba yun? Israel is now the melting pot of the world, folks. But still, Kahit na ganun, God will still protect Israel because as a nation, Israel is still the chosen nation of God. Why? Because God made that covenant to Abraham. Makikita nyo dito, 
The ship nations are all Gentile nations. For example, like if the Philippines will not persecute the Jews, if the Philippines will not persecute the Baptists like us, it will become a sheep nation. It will enter the 1,000-year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a Gentile nation. And during that time, although sin is still there, There will, be the, there will be world peace in the world because God or Jesus Christ will rule with a rod of iron. Ibig sabihin niyan, that is a righteous rule. Okay. Sabi ni Clarence Tarkin, the Antichrist is not a rival or counterfeit Christ. Sabi niya, no? He is an opposing Christ. And he said, this is clearly seen when we compare him with Christ in a series of contrasts. For example, in John 6.38, Christ came from above. In Revelation 11.7, Antichrist ascends from the pit. In John 5.43, Christ came in his Father's name. In John 5.43 also, the Antichrist will come in his own name. In Philippians 2.8, Christ humbled himself. In 2 Thessalonians 2.4, Antichrist exalts himself. In Isaiah 53.3, Christ was despised. In Revelation 13.3, the Antichrist is admired. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, he was rejected, correct? When the Antichrist will come, he'll be accepted. What's the preview? The AI is Antichrist. It is well accepted today by all nations. I will fight the AI in Congress. I'll go against the AI even if that is fully accepted by the government of President Bongbong Marcos. Inaccept na natin ang internet eh. Inaaccept na natin ang mechanical robot eh. Ang AI, hindi mechanical robot to. AI is a digital robot. Do you know that? In Philippians 2.9, after Christ's death on the cross and was raised up, the Bible says that Christ was exalted. In Isaiah 14.14 14 and 15, the Antichrist is cast down to hell. Yeah, lagay ang mga verses dyan para makita nyo, ha? Hindi yung sinasabi ko. Yung sinasabi ng Bible. Ano naman nyo ba ako? Oo. Okay. In John 6.38, 
Christ came to do the Father's will. Continue in verse. In Daniel 11.36, the Antichrist will do his own will. And the king shall do according to his will. I'm giving you the contrast between Christ and the Antichrist. All right? In Luke 19.10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Anyon, Christ came to save. In Daniel 8.24, the Antichrist comes to what? To destroy. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy you wonderfully. Perhaps the other word for wonderfully is that he shall destroy fashionably. He is destroyed. Right now, the Antichrist is destroying the world with all of the goodness of the world. Do you realize that? LGBTQ. I was interviewed today by the classmates of Chem Chem Gatapia, who is taking journalism in UST. And they were asking me why I filed the bill on heterosexual bill. Because there is the SOGI bill. Remove the soggy bill, I will remove the heterosexual bill. The LGBT are not the only ones that should have rights. Us, heterosexual as well. Sasabi nung mga LGBT, bakit? Majority naman ng tao sa mundo, heterosexual. Ha? Kaya nais namin ng karapatan. Because we are the minority. Look, why do we have the rights of women when the women is the majority in the world? Ano nga ba ako? Why do we have the rights of children when the children has the majority in the world? You see, rights are not based on who the majority is. Rights are based on the stigma of some people. And that is the work of what? The work of the Antichrist. You've got to realize, folks. Now, do you know that the Lord Jesus Christ was single? He never got married. He had no intention because he only has human nature, but he has no lust and sinful nature. Do you realize that? Huh? Even though some circles like the Mormons believe that Mary Magdalene became the girlfriend of Jesus Christ. That's crazy, isn't it? You've got to be crazy. They ought to be put to the mental hospital. But listen. Ginagaya yan ng Antichrist eh. Di ba? The Antichrist also is single. And sabi ng Bible, he does not ha have any desire for women. I'm going to add, because his desire is for men. Alright? In John 10, 4-15, Christ is called the good shepherd. Kita niya? Ha? Uy, kita niya? Ha? 
In Zechariah 11, verse number 16 and 17, the Antichrist is called the idol shepherd. Or the evil shepherd. Put the verses down. Study it yourself. In John 15, 1, Christ is called the true vine. In Revelation 14, 18, the Antichrist is the vine of the earth. Yeah. The vine of the earth. In John 14, 6, the Lord Jesus Christ is the truth. In 2 Thessalonians 2.11, the Antichrist is the lie. In Mark 1.24, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Holy One. I know thee who art thou art the Holy One of God. In 2 Thessalonians 2.8, the Antichrist is called the Lawless One. If you're going to read the other translations of Thessalonians 2.8, you're going to find the word wicked means lawless. In Isaiah 53, verse number 3, the Lord Jesus Christ was called the man of sorrows. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, the Antichrist is called the man of sin. In Luke 1, 35, the Lord Jesus Christ is called the Son of God. That holy thing we shall be born of thee, shall be called what? The Son of God. In 2 Thessalonians 2.3, the Antichrist is called the Son of what? Perdition. In 1 Thessalonians 3.16, the Lord Jesus Christ was the mystery of godliness. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. What is that mystery? God was manifest in the flesh. That was the mystery and that is the controversy between so many so-called Christian religions of today. They begin to debate if Christ is God or Christ is a mighty God, you know what I'm saying? Or Christ is the Father and then he is the Son and then he is the Holy Spirit. We call them Unitarians, all of those things. We are Trinitarians. We believe in the triunity of God. Yun ang mystery of godliness. God manifests 
in the flesh. Binago yan nung tinagalog nila ang scriptures. Upang i-accommodate ang ibang relihiyon na ibang paniniwala. I do not know if the Tagalog version there of a modern translation. Ano yung Tagalog dyan? Nang 1 Timothy 3.16. Ha? Walang pagtatalo, dakila ang kawabalaghan ng pagkadiyos. Yun. Di ba? Imbis na God ang ginamit o Diyos, ang ginamit, iaong nahayag sa laman. Yung gamit na tama, di ba? Ano yan eh? From the King James yan eh. Tama na po Pero yung ibang translation ng Tagalog, kung may Tagalog Bible kayo, na ibang translation, na hindi dito galing ha? Oo. Diyan nakalagay ang Diyos na naipahayag sa laman. Tama. Okay. Pero sa ibang translation ng Tagalog, yaong ipinahayag sa laman. Saan ka nakakita yung Diyos naging yaong? Ibig sabihin, that translation is trying to accommodate those religions that do not believe that Christ is God. Kita nyo. Kita nyo. Kaya maging careful tayo sa mga translations. Okay, yung mga pasto na nanonood sa akin, kine-question niyo ako, ah, na hindi ko pinapaniwala na inspired ang King James. Totoo. Preserve ang King James, hindi inspired. Preserve. Pag sinabing preserve, it's almost inspired. Ang inspired, yung original Bible that was written in Greek, Aramaic, and Hebrew. Pero yung English translation, hindi inspired yun, preserved yun. And by the way, walang King James na Tagalog. Ang King James, English translation. That's the reason, hindi ako gumagamit ng Tagalog version dito. Ang ginagamit ko, English translation because that is nearest to the original. Naintindihan niyo ba ako? Okay. So Christ was the mystery of godliness because He is God manifest in the flesh. How about the Antichrist? According to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 7, the Antichrist It's the mystery of iniquity. Yan no? For the mystery of iniquity that already work. Sino yan? He will be Satan manifest in the flesh. And by the way, merong ilang mga Bible scholars that believe that the Antichrist will also be born of a woman conceived by the evil spirit. not by any man. I do not know if, uh, maybe you ought to be my age. If you know the movie Rosemary's Baby. Have you heard of that movie? Rosemary's Baby? Have you heard of that? Ah, kayo mga 60 years old, you should have heard of that. You see, I haven't, I've, I haven't seen it. But Rosemary's Baby is a depiction of the birth of the Antichrist. Why? Because the baby of Rosemary was a baby that was conceived by the evil spirit. Then in sa Google, yung Rosemary's baby. Tinan nyo kung sino ang direktor na Rosemary's Baby. Sino yung direktor nun? Ha? Came from UK. Forgot the name. Ha? 
Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski was a member of the Church of Satan. He was violently killed. Noon yun, 1960s. Dinidipik na ang Diablo, lalo ngayon sa ating panahon. Am I right? Pero mamaya, there will be what they, they will call as redirected Rosemary's Baby movie. Di ba? Oh. Now, Hindi ko kaya tapusin to eh, but I'd like to go with the according to Tim Lahey Prophecy Bible. Ang sabi ni Edward Hinson sa kanyang pag-aaral ng Antichrist. The Bible clearly portrays the coming of a world leader. Tama? who will negotiate a peace treaty with Israel in the last days. Anong sinabi ko sa inyo when I was preaching about the war in Israel? Joe Biden cannot even stop the war. He tried to. He cannot. He asked Benjamin Netanyahu to proclaim a truce. But yesterday, Israel attacked Hamas. You think Russia and UK or China? 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 Who will negotiate the peace treaty between Israel and the nations against Israel? Only the Antichrist. Kapag yan nangyari sa panahon natin, Andiyan na siya. I am just waiting for days and hours for Jesus Christ to come back. The rapture will take place. Listen now. The rapture might take place. And listen, pastors. Ano nood sa akin, ha? The rapture might take place before the Antichrist announces himself or make a peace to Israel or The, 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 the rapture will take place right after the Antichrist announces his coming. Why? There's no timetable on the rapture. Meron ba? Wala. Even the son does not even know. Only the father No. Hindi, sabi ng isang pastor. Darating ang, pano, ang Panginoon bago. Bago yung Antichrist. Saan mo nabasa? Saan mo nabasa yun? Saan ang magazine? Ha? Ang hirap sa ibang mga pastor, sa ibang mga preachers, gumagawa ng sariling spekulasyon eh. No. Stay in the Word of God. Do not add on the prophecy of God's book. Do not subtract from the prophecy of God's book. Stay right in the word of God, literally. Do not make a presupposition when God is silent about it. Di ba? Anong sabi sa Deuteronomy 29.29? Yan. Naalala ko lang. Deuteronomy 29.29. Am I right in that verse? Ayan. Ano sa kalagay? The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Therefore, do not speculate. Do not presuppose. Do not add to what the Word of God says. Just preach the word on what is being said. Nakita nyo, di ba, 
Binabanggit ko yung research ni Clarence Larkin. Ngayon, binabanggit ko yung research ni Tim Lahey. Anong ginagamit ko? Scriptures. Hindi ako pwedeng maniwala sa research ng kung sinong tao dyan na wala sa akin pinoprovide na scriptures. Very clearly. Naunawaan niyo ba? Now look here. We are not talking here of any kind of emotional things or intellectual things. We are talking about doctrine and spiritual things. And you know what? The Bible says, we compare spiritual with spiritual. Mm. Ang sabi ni uh, Edward Hinson, the, an the term Antichrist appears only in 1 John 2, 18-22, 1 John 4, 3, and 2 John 1, 7. The Apostle, Paul, John, the Apostle John indicates that the Antichrist of the apocalyptic area, era is coming in the future. But he adds also that there are already many Antichrists in his time and even today. Sino yung Antichrist? False teachers. Daming television network dyan. Pinapasuspindi nga namin yung isa eh. Sabi sa akin na isang congressman, okay ba kung magkipagdebate sa'yo yun? Sabi ko, ayoko, baka lumindol eh. In the general sense, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. In this world, and has been since the beginning of time. 1 John 4, 3. First John 4, 3. Then If you're going to read Revelation 12 and 13, you're going to find out that the real power behind the Antichrist is Satan himself. Binanggit ko na sa inyo na tulad din ang sinabi ni Tim Lahey, study Bible here, the person we commonly refer to, the, to as the Antichrist is actually known by several names and titles throughout the Bible. To let them be. Revelation 13.1 Man of sin. 2 Thessalonians 2.3 Wicked one. 2 Thessalonians 2.8 Abomination. Matthew 24.15 Little horn. Daniel 7.8 First king. Daniel 8.23 Prince that shall come. Daniel 9.26 Vile person. Daniel 11, 21, and strong-willed king. Daniel 11, 36. Sabi nito, the Antichrist will be the most incredible human leader the world has ever known. Very charismatic. Very convincing. Be careful. You might not even be able to refuse him. The Bible says, so that even the very elect, if it is possible, will be deceived. Ano verse yun? Ano verse yun? Ha? Huh? Matthew 24, 24. Look here now. Nya, ha? Tanong kayo, ha? Anong kalagay sa Matthew 24, 24? 
<clears throat> for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Sino yung very elect? Tayo. Marami na nangyari dyan eh. Mga Bible college graduates ng Baptist colleges. Lumipat na sa iba't ibang kulto. Yung nagpipris ng gospel for so many years. Ano pinipris ngayon? Iba na. Yung nakalagay sa Bible that if it were possible that the very elect can be deceived. Oh, so be careful. It might be that the Antichrist will come before the rapture takes place so that you can be deceived. Hindi pa kayo nagtataka? Pag kulto, dumadami sila. Di ba? I mean, Hindi ko na kinakailangan sabihin sa inyo yung mga pangalan ng mga kultong niya. Hindi naman karismatik ang muka. Hindi karismatik magdamit. Karismatik pa nga ako eh. Pero nakakapagtaka. Ang dami nilang nakukumbinsi. Baka ang iba sa inyo kasama dyan eh. Ako, kakaunti lang. Bakit? Palagi akong galit. Tama mali. Sin- sino man yun? Kahit totoo ang sinasabi ko, ha? Hindi aayon sa akin kasi palagi kong galit. Di ba? Ang Antichrist, hindi nagagalit yan. Very accommodating yan. Very charismatic yan. Alam ba yan? I was talking to one Baptist believer one day and he told me, you know what, Pastor? Since I got saved, I have never been angry. Never. I said, are you sure you are saved? Because my Bible tells me, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Oh, magpasalamat ang iba sa inyo. Ah, nagagalit ako dito lang eh, pero mamaya nagbibiro na ako eh. Tutuwan-tuwa na kayo doon, di ba? Ah, nakalimutan na ni Pastor. Oh, kinakalimutan ko. Ano, maaalalo ko pa? Papanaginipan kita? Huy, ayaw kong bangungutin. Bira ka. The Antichrist will be the most incredible human leader the world has ever known. He will be the epitome of what? Of human genius. Tanya, human genius. and power and master of deception, empowered by the father of life, according to Daniel 11.21, promising peace, he pushes the world into war. Have you ever seen Putin speak Ah, yung double niya nagsalita. Iba ang sinabi. Kaya dinismiss niya. Ganun na nangyayari ngayon. May mga double na ngayon eh. Oo. Pwede ko magpagawa ng AI no rito eh. Image dito. Na imbes ako mapipis eh. Ganun na ngayon. Ano nangyayari? Pwede ka na mag-absent sa school. Basta meron kang AI.
All right? Now, ito ang sabi. At least 10 factors will identify the Antichrist when he comes to power. Ah, oh. sulat nyo, ah. Okay, para malaman nyo. Only one person in history will fit every one of these factors. There have been many prototypes, but there will only be one Antichrist. Number one, he will rise to power in the last days. We do not know. Huh? It will take place before the rapture or immediately after the rapture. But he will rise to power in the last day. Daniel 8, 19 to 23. Number two. Ito. Medyo gray area to. He will not come on the world scene until after the rapture. Gray area yan. Okay. Ginamit niya ang 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 8. Number three. He will rule the entire world. He will rule the entire world. Sana maging headquarters niya. Yung ipapagawa ng Israel na templo sa Jerusalem with the imprimatur of the Arabs, that is where the Antichrist will be. And by the way, there is one Bible scholar that said that the Antichrist will be part Arab and part Jew. Which I might believe, kaysa naman, the Antichrist will be part American and part Filipino. Diba? Oh. He will rule the entire world at the flick of his finger, by computer, by the internet, by AI, by digital technology. He will be able to rule the entire world. Watch out. Sinabi ko sa inyo, di ba, sa preaching ko, just recently, nagkaroon ng World Economic Forum sa Egypt, 167 nations were present. And what is that forum? It is to control the whole world. With what? With what? Especially in the area of viruses. Ibig sabihin, Pag sinabi ng World Economic Forum and the World Health Organization, ito ang gamot na gagamitin nyo. Walang bansa na magsasabi na hindi. Number four, he will rule by international consent. Revelation 17, 12, and 13. Ibig sabihin, papaniwalaan siya ng bawat bansa. And all the leaders of the world will bow to him. Number five, he will rule by deception. Daniel 8, 24, 24 to 25. Number six, he will be intelligent and persuasive. Daniel 7, 20. Hindi ako intelligent. Hindi ako persuasive. Huh? You're not convinced by my intelligence. You're not convinced by my persuasion. You are convinced by the Spirit of God. Not me. Now, if you're not listening, it is the devil that is making you sleep. Not the Holy Spirit. Hello? I know some of you can sleep with open eyes. You look at me, alam mo, pag ang tao, hindi kumukurap. 
तू लुकी आणि इंटेलिजंट अँड परसुएसिव नंबर सेव्हन He will control the global economy. He will control the global economy. Revelation 13 verse 16 to 17. Number 8, he will be assisted by the false prophet. Revelation 13 11 to 18. Number 9, he will make and break a peace treaty with Israel. Daniel 9:26-27 Number 10 He will claim to be God 2 Thessalonians 2:4 Alam natin yan, di ba? There are many other details given in the Bible regarding the Antichrist. Ang sabi niya rito, Whether he is Jewish or Gentile is not entirely clear. What is clear, however, is that he will control the last great bastion of Gentile world power and will extend his control over the entire world. Promising to ensure world peace. Through what? Through what? through a series of international treaties, agreements, and alliances. Despite his promises of world peace, he will later inevitably plunge the world into the most catastrophic war of all time. Ito, sinabi ko na to, even in Congress. There will be no world war before the Antichrist. The world war will come after the tribulation period. That will be fought by the 200 million army coming from northeast and if you if you are in israel you go directly northeast you know what they're going to find you are going to go into the eastern nations including ukraine including china including turkey including Syria. Taposin ko na rito. Pagod na kayo makinig eh. Ako hindi pa ako pagod magsalita. Diba nakakapagod mag-isip? Pero ito nga sabihin ko sa inyo. Why is this message needed by you? And by all of us? To let us realize if we belong to the true faith of Jesus Christ. To let you know if you are truly converted to the Lord Jesus Christ. To let you know if you are mature enough in Christ that you will not be deceived by any cult or false prophet. To let you realize The most important thing today is your spiritual life 
and your spiritual deportment before God than your economic status. If I were you, don't be pampered by your own resources and riches. Because if you are, you might not be able to endure persecution. Amen? Learn to practice austerity in your own life right now. Learn to make some sacrifices. Learn to be in pain and endure it. Learn affliction and just trust the Lord for it. Learn to give more than get. Learn to be a blessing more than get blessed. Why? Because if you do not prepare for that, you're not going to endure persecution when it comes. You hear me? The Bible is still true when it says, they that live godly in this present world shall what? Shall receive tribulation. Don't you ever think that what the Lord wants us to be on this earth is to have all the blessings we could be able to get. Heaven is a great blessing already. I do not need any more. You know how much we spent giving to thousands of constituents here in the 6th District of Manila, of which many congressmen do not give. We gave five kilos of rice to more than 5,000 poor people. We gave ham to about 30,000 people. We gave cash to thousands of people. I could have kept that. I could have enjoyed that money. Do you realize that? But what is that? And so many times, and I feel guilty about this too. We want to get pampered. And when you get pampered, you always think of your economic situation than your spiritual condition. You think that when the Antichrist will come, you choir can still sing the songs you're singing right now? Now, why do you need this preaching tonight? Huh? Is there a real valid reason why you need this? Think. You think that believers in Christ should live an easy life? No. We are not commanded to live an easy life. Kaya nga ang sabi ng Panginoong Yesu Cristo, hindi ba? Oh. I came not to send peace on earth. I came to send a sword. Why? Because your loved ones will be against you. Your friends will be against you. Even people that you know of will not like what you stand for. Why? 
Whatever it takes, make a stand. I'm going to lose my job, so. Then lose your job. Is God not able to provide any job you have? All of us believe that God was the one that gave us our job. If we lose that, God will give another job. Do you believe that? Yes, I believe it. Has God provided for your needs? Yes, he has. And yes, he is. And yes, he will. What are you afraid of? I'm being warned. If I continue on with my resolutions, if I continue on fighting in Congress, I might lose the election. So? I'm not afraid to lose the election. Come on. I've lost three times. Am I right? When I fought the LGBT, when I supported the former president, I lost. Did I get frustrated? No. Did I get stressed up? No. Did I get depressed? No. Why? Because it is God that puts you in power. It is God that tells you it is over. I was telling our yuppies today, and I thank God for Verley and his family who are, are advising them. We want our young people, our young professionals, to be strong in the Lord. To be mature in their faith. to begin to focus more on their spiritual vocation than their economic provision. Because God has never failed any of his children. And he will never. Ang dami ko ng karanasan sa 48 years ng ekisiyang ito, baka akala nyo. Hindi nyo alam pinagdaanan ko dito eh. And I always say this, folks. I do not endure to enjoy. I enjoy to endure. It's not easy. When you have pain in your body, you think it is easy? No, it's not. But what am I going to do? Complain? Murmur? No. I would rather praise God with all my pain than murmur. I was eating lunch today with some friends and they were telling me, you know what, Pastor, you should also learn to rest. You should learn to live. I said, listen, I work to live and I live to work. And when it is work, it is the work of Jesus Christ, not anything else. I learned that when I was young growing up. I am now quite old, not too old, but I'm quite old and I'm still a young man when it comes to serving my Lord. And by the grace of God, 
I'm not going to stop. You think I will? Watch me. I will still speak in this pulpit even if I cannot walk anymore. I will still preach the word even if I am in wheelchair. I will still be here in this pulpit even if I am drugged right in this pulpit. I will still be preaching the word of God even if I will crawl in this pulpit. Nothing can prevent me doing that. Why? Because the word of God is so precious even in our time. I will never betray the Savior who loved me and saved me. Never. I'm not perfect. And I will never claim to be. But one thing for sure. I'm a child of God. And I'm God's servant. I know of some pastors who are even younger than me that are now retired. And they're calling themselves Pastor Emeritus. No. As long as I live, I will still be the pastor here. Iwan Yoko, I will still be the pastor here. You get offended, I will still be the pastor here. I'll be alone, I will still be the pastor here. Do you realize that? I might get angry with some of you. And I might get frustrated with some of you. But hey, listen. I'm still the pastor here. That's why you need to hear this message. Where's your loyalty? I'm not referring to you being loyal to me. Who is your priority? Do you only want to go to heaven? And you do not want to live for God here on this earth? You always talk about heaven? Now let's talk about the life on earth. Serving Him faithfully. Don't talk about heaven to me. Talk about your faithfulness to God. Exactly why the devil is enjoying his time. You know why? Because there's a lot of people that believe they're believers in Christ. who have sold their birthright. I like my beard. Yeah. yeah, I like the color of my hair. I look at my beard and and you know your beard will tell you 
You are really an intellectual, isn't it? Well, that is just an added statement to you. So you will forget the other statements I said. You don't listen and you sleep on me. I will sing that song to you. Sleep, my darling baby. The Antichrist is not far away. Are you listening? I'm not finished yet. I will be finished when I get to be finished. And you sit down there and listen. You know why? To many of you, we only see each other once a week. Am I right? And I thank God for that. You know, it's, I think it is crazy. I'll, I'll be crazier if I see you every day. So the Lord is saying, oh, just see your members once a week. So you can still be sane and mentally alert. You are watching right now in the privacy of your own homes, even if you can come here. Don't come here anymore. It's better, you to put, better for you to be there. Especially if I don't like your face. You're going to have Caroline tonight, am I right? How many houses will you be in? Huh? Two houses. How about when the Antichrist comes? Will you still go caroling? Huh? Sino yung kumanta ng How Great Thou Art? Ma? <laughs> May kumanta ng How Great Thou Art, sabi niya, Oh Lord, I'm God. <laughs> And so many times, that's a mistake. But in reality, to some, it's true. You have made yourself a little God. Am I right, Ira? Ira, am I right? Tulad nyo. Sabihin ko, am I right? Ganun na sakot nyo eh. Oh, come on, people. I am preaching a series on the last days. Because I believe that to be absolutely true. And I am waiting for the coming of my Lord and my Savior. That would be the most wonderful and beautiful thing that can ever happen in our lives. 
when Jesus comes. So, single ladies, don't worry about getting married anymore. Single men, get married. Husband, don't worry about your wives. I don't worry about my wife anymore. She worries about me. You don't? Praise the Lord. I don't worry about my kids. They're all faithfully serving God now. I praise God for that. I prayed for my son, folk, for more than eight years, folks. He came back. You know how many answered prayers I have? I pray for this property since the 80s. We own it now. I might not be able to mention all of your names, although I mentioned some. I mentioned some of your names. But to many of you, I don't. But you know what? I pray for you. I pray when I'm lying down. I pray when I walk. I call it prayer walk. I'm so glad I was told I don't have any appointments tomorrow. So, I have time to rest. So, I have time to get tired tonight. So, I can rest tomorrow. You know why? Because if I don't rest tomorrow, I am going to think of an appointment. That is what I do. When I don't have any appointments, I make one. You're all awake. Thank God for that. It means that you are waiting for my next statement. So stand. You're tired sitting down? Huh? Well, I'm tired standing up. You're tired listening? Well, I'm tired speaking. But I'm so glad that all of us is in the house of God tonight. Whether you be in a different congregation, in care stations, in their ministries, we are in God's houses tonight. This morning, I was driving my own car. And there was a taxi cab that stopped by a nightclub and stopped right in the middle of the road, I began to honk my horn. And there's a drunk white guy that came near my car and tried to kick it. And I have my two boys with me. And you realize that in a morning like that, at 6 in the morning, the nightclubs are full. 
And we have a hard time at 9 in the morning to fill up our houses of God in full. I believe, leave, leave to you all the messages tonight. And you think about it. Search your heart. What is the real purpose why you have to hear this message this evening? 